Ladies and gentlemen, hello and welcome to today's web conference. This is Fast Track Dynamics 365 for Finance and Operations Tech Talk. Today's topic, GST and GTE Part 2, Global Tax Engine. My name is Janice and I'm going to be your moderator today. We are broadcasting this web conference through Teams Live Events and the audio can be heard through your PC speakers. Today's web conference is being recorded on behalf of the Microsoft Corporation. Participation in the meeting today indicates your consent to being included in the meeting recording. Attendees may access the web conference recording via the same registration link that was used to attend today's live broadcast. If you have questions for the presenters or need support, you can turn on the Q&A panel by selecting the question mark icon located in the upper right hand corner of your screen. We do have presenters standing by to respond to your questions throughout the session. Now, on to the presentation. Presenting for us today from Microsoft, we have Senior PM Lead, Richard Luan, and supporting Richard on Q&A is Pravat Bhargava, who is a Senior Program Manager. So without any further delay, Richard, welcome and thanks for joining us. Okay, thank you. So in today's session, I'm going to introduce you the background, the design of the new tax engine. So this tax engine was introduced into India market on 7.3 and uh, we built, on, built our GST solution on top of this engine. So we will start from the overview and then I will try to compare the new engine with an old tax engine and then we will walk through the data flow and finally I will do some mini demo because on this flight on this Friday, there were another session for me to demo some extension scenario based on the request in India market. So talking about the GTE, basically we 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 bring three main points: the benefit to our customer. The first one is automatically tax applicability. So if you are familiar with the old tax engine, there is lo still a lot of many work for the user who entering the sales document to select or pick up the correct tax code. But in our new GTE, it is possible that for the user who enter sales document or purchase document, he don't need to worry about what is the correct tax type, what is the correct tax rate. He just enter the transaction directly. Don't need to worry about what is the taxability logic. And uh, it's fully configurable. So that means uh, if you want to change, uh, for example, uh, take applicability as example. In India, if you if it's an interstate transaction, then it is uh, CGST plus SGST will be applicable. And for interstate transaction, then it is IGST be applicable. And there's a lot of flexibility there. And if you think that the, the applicability rule is not suitable for your business, you can easily configure the applicability rule by changing the configuration without any code change. So that is the configurability I'm talking about now. And also such configurability available for tax calculation, posting, and settlements. And since we maintain all the logic in the configuration file, which is actually an XML file, so it is easier for partner or customer to deploy the configuration into the environment and even share with other customer or partner. And in the below of the slides, from functional uh, functional perspective, it cover four functional pillars: tax applicability, and you know tax calculation. Tax calculation means how the tax should be calculated per different tax type, like customer duty, a GST, uh, withholding tax, TDS, and we have tax accounting. Tax accounting means how you want to post a tax. For example, for purchase transaction, 
whether you want to debit the tax to the tax recoverable account or expense account or probably inventory account or fixed asset acquisition account. So there is a flexibility there. So such logic is also configurable. And the last point is tax settlement. So in India, we have some flexibility to settle, to do some cross tax component settlement. So we have CGST, we have SGST, we have, uh, we have IGST. So you can settle between, you can do the tax settlement between CGST and IGST. So it's not a, just you, you do the settlement within one tax component. So such logic can also be configurable in our configuration. So yes, so for GTE, we handle this four functional area and we provide these three benefits, key benefits to the, to the market. So next part is for your easier understanding of the new tax engine, I'm trying to compel the old tax engine. I mean the sales tax group, identity tax group, sales tax code, this, uh, this concept with the GTE in the three area, three functional area. I mean, applicability, calculation, posting. So the first part is tax applicability. So on the, on the left side of the slides, it is old tax engine. As you might be familiar with the design, we have sales tax group, we have item sales tax group. So you maintain several tax code in these two groups. And then you assign the sales tax group to customer, vendor, or account. And then you can also assign item sales tax group to item master or procurement category, sales tax category. So when you create a sales transaction or purchase transaction, you have customer, you have um, item, then, you know, it system with default, the sales tax group, item sales tax group. And the intersection, will be the sales test code, which is applicable for this transaction. But still, it's a limited automation. Sometimes you need a more flexible applicability rule, which cannot be satisfied by this uh, limited applicability logic with old tax engine. So that, that's resulting, you know, sometimes users still need to manually change the sales test group or item sales test group so to make sure that the correct sales test code will be applied for this transaction. And if you check the right side of GTE, it is a fully configurable and automated process. So on the, on the top, there is a, uh, it is a high level flow chart for GTE to determine what is the applicable tax type and tax component. So when you call GTE to determine to calculate the tax, we have a concept called tax type. So system will check whether the tax type is applicable for this certain transaction. If the tax type is applicable, for example, GST is applicable and, and GST is the tax type. And under GST tax type, we have CGST, SGST, IGST. So system will decide is CGST applicable for this transaction? If CGST is applicable, system will return, system will do the same thing for other tax component under the same tax type. And then system will check whether SGST will, will be a, is applicable for this transaction and do the same for IGST. And finally, system will return the applicable tax type together with the tax component. So probably for an inter, intrastate transaction, system will return GST as a tax type together with CGST and SGST as a tax component. So the key point here is there are applicability rule on top of the tax type and the tax component. System will start the logic from the tax type and then to the tax component. And internally, system will do the applicability check for both tax type and tax component like this. So, firstly, if suppose that I'm checking the applicability logic, applicability rule for GST, it will first check the condition you defined 
in the GST text type. To check whether such condition is satisfied, if it is satisfied, it will further check the lookups. The type of lookup. If the type of lookup is con configuration, so system will first further check whether the lookup you define in the configuration is satisfied. If yes, okay, then this type then this type is applicable. If not, of course, it's not applicable. And there is possibility that you define the lookup. The source type is user data. Then you need system will check the lookup you define in the text setup. So from business perspective, for example, to determine whether it's CGST plus SGST or IGST, it can be kind of hard coded. So that means if it is interest state, then you know it's CGST plus SGST. If it's interstate, it is IGST. So such logic can be maintained in inside of the configuration. So in this box, so you can define the logic either in the condition or you define the lookup as a source type as configuration. But there are some situation like we have SAS in India and whether SAS is applicable, it is determined by the item you sell. An item, you know, is defined in the FinOps. So you cannot do such configuration to, to, to do such setup within the configuration. You should deploy the configuration into the FinOps and use the data you define in the FinOps to determine whether SAS is applicable or not. So that's the reason you have to, in the configuration, you should define the lookup as a, in the source type is user data, and then you maintain the lookup condition in the text setup. Okay, so it looks a little bit complex, but I will go to the system to show you how it is implemented. But of course, later on you you can refer back to this slides um, to to compile the compile the logic in the in the system. And here I highlight here uh, for both condition and lookup. You know this part is configurable, so that's a benefit we can bring with GTE. Originally, you know all this logic is kind of hard coded; you cannot change it. But for GTE, you know you can change the condition, you can change the lookup condition, which can give you much more flexibility. And here is the task calculation. So in old tax engine, obviously you don't you, you can there, you cannot configure anything. All the calculation logic is hard coded in X plus plus. In case you want to change the calculation logic, you have to change the X plus plus. But in GTE, you can maintain the tax calculation formula under the tax component. So it's fully configurable. You can change the calculation logic in whatever way you like. So here is just a screenshot. You can see how the tax is calculated for CGST. We have several components. We have we have formula. Um, yeah, sorry, several formula. We have formula to calculate the base amount. Then you know we have formula to cal calculate tax amount, and then we have load on inventory amount, non-business usage amount, re recoverable amount. So a lot of lot of tax amount or we call it tax measure for you to do the tax posting. And later is uh, tax posting. The last part is tax posting. So still for posting logic is also hard coded. Yeah, so this one is uh, tax posting. Actually, I have two parts. This part is about accounts because when we talk about the uh, posting, firstly, you need to know what what kind of account you can post the tax amount. So in this slides, I just want to say that for the account, it is limited account. So if you open the uh, open the VAT, this ledger posting group, you can see there were there were some tax there were some tax account which you can post the tax. But the number of the account is hard coded. In case you want more account, it's not possible without any, without customization, without X plus plus code change. And uh, the task code and 
the relationship between Tesco and Ledger Posting Group is one-to-one -one relationship. And if you look at the GTE, firstly, the number of the account is configurable, depends on the posting profile you define under the, under the task component. And also, the relationship between task component and the account group is one too many. So you can define this lookups under the components. So you can have multiple posting accounts group attached to this component. For example, in this in this configuration, we say we configured the accounting logic like this. We say GST will have multiple set of the account, test account, per each GST registration number. So that means for a company, if you have multiple VAT, multiple GST registration number, you want to use different set of accounts. Set of accounts means tax recoverable account, tax payable accounts for different VAT, uh, for different GST registration. So it is one to many relationship, which resulting, you know, you don't have to maintain many tax tax code like you did in the in the older tax engine. Yeah, and there is another part is about the tax uh, posting, tax posting logic. And uh, it, of course, in the old tax engine, the posting logic is hard coded. And in the GTE, we have posting profile. You can configure the posting logic just, as, just like a formula, like I showed here. Okay, so that's the difference between the old tax engine and GTE in this three functional area. And then this is a uh, data flow. So first concept I have to, I want to highlight here is the source document. So source document, this, uh, this rectangle. So source document means that any transaction which is taxable from tax perspective, like sales order, like vendor invoice, like purchase order, right? And in the middle, this, we have a, from GT perspective, we, we wrap the concept called taxable document. So it's a, it's a data model. It's a data model, it's the abstraction of the source document. So we have sales order, we have purchase order. There's different fields for purchase order and sales order, but from tax perspective, the concept conceptually, they are the same, right? There are net amount. In India, we have accessible value. We have quantity. We have ship from, ship to country. So all this stuff are common from tax perspective for all these source documents. So that's the reason we, we have a concept called taxable document. This is abstraction of, of all the source document. And it is, also an input for for a tax document. Tax document is a, is a place for you to maintain the tax logic, including tax calculation, tax applicability, and uh, tax calculation. And in order to get the value from the source document in FinOps, you need to have a model mapping to ma to get the value from the source document, like sales order, like vendor invoice, to map the value into the taxable document we define in the configuration. And we have this value, then we can use this value to do to execute the logic you define in the tax document for applicability, for calculation, for posting. And then in the end, the order result will be persisted into tax chance table and later on it will be used in reporting and inquiries. So that's the data flow. So you create a sales order system GTE will enter, will execute the model mapping to get the value from sales order, map to taxable document, and then tax document will use tax, use the data you have in the taxable document to, to do the applicability calculation and posting. And then the result will be in, in the same table as you have in the old tax engine. And then for the, for the reporting inquiry. So, this one and is uh, is for for me to further explain the concept to you. 
as I said, for for sales order, right? We have we have customer, we have item, we have in the header we have customer and several other fields which actually are not relevant to tax. And we have item in India, we have address and SAC, we have accessible value, we have quantity, warehouse. So a lot of stuff, but here I only list the field which are nest are needed for for tax for tax applicability for tax calculation for tax posting and of course we have purchase order which have similar field as i listed in the sales order part and also for general journal so all these are taxable document source document right and on the right side it is a physical structure of taxable document so firstly we have data model so data model is a tree structure with header with line and with several fields we we think is relevant we think are relevant for tax we have customer we have accessible value we have is interstate we have miscellaneous charge so these are all the fields which we think are relevant to tax and then we have model mapping for each of the source document type like sales order purchase order so within the source doc, within the model mapping we do we maintain some metadata between this the field you have in the in the in the finops in the sales order in the purchase order and the field is defined in the customer so you can imagine there is some map, there is some mapping between the sales order customer and the data model header customer and also you have mapping for sales order line accessible value and data model lines accessible value so this is a this is a model mapping and then we have several other data model which we call it a reference model which is used for for tax setup i will explain it in detail later so in the end we have this model we have this model mapping and then we have engine to execute the logic you define in this in this uh, taxable document when you create a sales order so the engine will read the model mapping you define here and fetch the value from the sales order customer and set this value to data model header customer so that is a logic and in the end from gt perspective you will have a taxable document with a data model with all the real data the GTE get from the from the source document like sales order right so like what I've shown here we have customer name IMMF 0001 we have sales direction we have addressing we have accessible value so all this value are get from the real source document by model mapping so we have all this data, then GTE will feed this data into the tax document to execute the logic you define in the tax document for, for that full area, tax applicability calculation and posting. So that is a general data flow. Um, before I move on, I will switch to the, um, to FinOps to show you some concept. So we have this we have this electronic reporting workspace, and then we have this tax configuration. So physically we have this taxable document, and you can have multiple tax documents. So the, we have this global taxable document where we maintain the um, taxable field right like shift from country shift to country which we believe is common but across the country and then we maintain we derived uh indian specific taxable document where we maintain some indian specific field so let's open the designer of the taxable document Firstly, you notice that it is a tree structure. We have header, and on the header we have several fields, which is in the header level, like a customer account, like ledger currency, and then we have line. 
so you can see we have several fields you have in the in the line right we have account type account accounting code we have accessible value which is indian specific field and uh, we have uh, yeah we have atchison code which is also indian field and uh, is sez party so that is uh, that is uh, abstraction as i mentioned for, to the source document which is taxable and then as i said there were multiple data model so this is one of the data model on the top if you switch to the reference model so now we are in a taxable document if you switch to reference model you can see there is a multiple other data model the structure is the same it's also a tree structure so we have city then we have city and city so why we need to have so many model additional model and we call it reference model because sometimes for example i yeah let me go to here so for example we have a reference model called hsn why we need a, this additional data model because hsn is we also have a field in the in the data model in the taxable document and in the in the line uh, hsn code Yeah, we have a HSN code defined in the mod in the in the taxable document, and you know it will be used as an applicability rule, applicability lookup column in the tax document, which for user to to select the HSN to determine the appropriate tax rate in the in the tax setup. But we don't expect user. So in the tax setup, we have here. As you can see in the rates table for CGST, we have a column called HSN code. It this field is coming from the data model, is coming from the taxable document. So why we need a reference model? Because we don't expect user to enter the HSN code manually. Instead, we want a user to to be able to select select the existing HSN code it defined in the in the finance and operation. So that's a reason we need a reference model to to get the value, to get the list of this HSN code from finance and operation. So what you should do is we define a reference model. If I go here, we define a reference model. It is the data model abstract the HSN master. So we have HSN, we have a field called HSN code. You can add more field here. And then you can associate the HSN code you can associate the reference model this HSN mode, uh, this HSN code, which is a reference model to this model field. So you will be able to to select in a text setup instead of menu input this long uh, number. OK, so that is the purpose of having reference model. And. And of course, one last part is uh, model mapping. So we have we have data model, we have model mapping, and we have multiple data model, as I already explained. If you click the map model to data source, you can see we have a lot of model mapping because we have many source documents, like purchase order, sales order. So for example, this is customer invoice, this is free tax invoice. So if you click the designer, <clears throat> so on the on the left side it is it is a um, data source type. So you can you can you can drag you can add a data source from the financial operation. It can be a class, can be a numeration, table records, table, but mostly for for our tax engine, we use a special 
data source, which we call it taxable document source. So you can add this data source. I don't want to add it because I already have it. So if you click add button, system will add a new data source in the middle of the screen. So this is all the available uh, data source for you to do the mapping. So we already have a data source uh, with type taxable document source. So this is a one. Here are all the available field for you to do the mapping. So on the right side is a data model. So this is a taxable document. So you can see how it is, how it is mapped. For now, you know, this uh, customer account in the data model is mapped to this data source header customer account. Actually, it is uh, this one. So if you want to do additional mapping, you can you can select this. You can select the field in the middle and then select this one. If the value of these two fields are the same, so for export order is in them and for excise vendor type is also enumeration value, then you can bind them. Or you can click edit button to do some, to write some formula to do the conversion. You can refer to electronic reporting, this uh, this uh, docs for, for detail because GT is built on top of the GER framework for especially from taxable document model perspective. Okay, so I will I will come back to the uh, to the tax document later. So let me switch back to the to the slides. So then we just finished the taxable document, the idea of taxable document, and then we I want to discuss about the tax document. So as I mentioned, tax document is uh, is a place for you to maintain. Uh, the the tax the real tax logic real tax logic means tax applicability calculation posting. So I, I draw the this uh, uh, flow chart. It looks a little bit complex because um, because it's really flexible. Depends on how you want to do the uh, do the configuration. So I categorize uh, the flow chart into several parts. One is general and we have several change you you might need to down in the taxable document and uh, all the rest of four area is is uh, is extension you have done in the tax document so the scenario is you you want to add a new tax component what should you consider and what you sh what you should what you should do in order to add a new tax component so firstly you should decide whether this new tax component require new tax new model field. If you need a new model field, so you need to do the extension for the taxable document because as I explained, taxable document is uh, abstraction of the source document and it is input for tax document. So suppose that you wanna you wanna add a new component Tax component, maybe just like a mm, additional SAS, and you want a additional SAS. The applicability logic for additional SAS is the item ID, and you realize that in in the current taxable document there is no field called item ID. In that case, you have to extend the taxable document to adding this field, and do the mapping. So. So what is what you need to do to extend the taxable document? So the first thing is you need to extend the taxable document. So you cannot change the taxable document by uh, released by Microsoft. And then you need to add a new field. Suppose it is item ID. And then you need to decide, OK, whether this new field will be used in tax setup and it requires drop down list. As I explained, so for item ID, I think you must you, it will be used for applicability and uh, it will be uh, used in the tax setup. And you also want the user to be able to pick up the item ID user defined in the financial operation system. So definitely you need to add a reference model and then you need to attach the reference model to the new field. 
then basically that's all for the change required in the taxable document. So in case you you the new tax component require a new field, which is only for calculation of posting purpose, then you don't need to add any reference model. You can skip this part. So this is a change for taxable document. In case your scenario, your new tax component do not require any new field, you can skip to, you can skip the change for taxable document. You can jump to the uh, tax document part. So you should extend the tax document and you need to, if you change the data model by adding new field, you need to make sure in your extended tax document, you should change the data model to the extended taxable document because by default, uh, the tax document will use the Microsoft data model. If not, I mean, if you did not extend the taxable document, you can jump to adding new tax type if it's a, it's a new tax type. Suppose, but, mo but of course you can say well, the tax component I, I'm going to add is actually part of the GST, so they, you can skip this part. You can add the tax component directly. So you have the tax component, then you need to decide what kind of tax measure you want to have. You, you, the tax measure means um, base amount, tax amount, tax rate, so and a load on inventory percentage, reverse charge percentage. So these are the tax measure, which are actually the building block for, for, for calculation and posting. So, but of course, you can first, you need to further, first check whether there, uh, the, the measure you are, you, you want already existed. For most of case, I think there are the measure you, you need it. So in that case, you can just select the tax measure. If not, you need to add a new tax measure. And then, so you have the, you have the tax component, you have all the measure. Then the next thing you need to do is you need to decide how the tax component will be determined. I'm talking about applicability. So whether you sh it should be determined dynamically or st st uh, statically, if it is, it is not dynamically, you can define the lookup column with source type as, uh, uh, if, it's, if it needs to be decided by the dynamically, which means it rely on the data you define in a, in a financial and operation system, like item ID, like Edgerson code, you should define the lookup column with source type as user data. And if not, that means that the applicability, applicability logic is static, which like uh, interstate, interstate. It's, it's the same for all the customer. So you can configure such logic into the configuration. Either you can use the condition or use a lookup with source type as configuration. Okay. And then you define the lookup for tax rate, load on inventory. So applicability, there are two parts. One is uh, on the tax component level. Another is the rate lookup. So you probably need to define the logic, how you want to determine the tax rate and uh, probably load on inventory if you have this logic. So that's a uh, part of the applicability. And then you need to create a formula to handle the task calculation. So you need to add a tax formula in tax component. And probably if you wanna, if there is different formula for different transaction, then you can define the condition for the formula. For example, you have a tax component which need to handle the load on inventory scenario. And Definitely, this formula is only applicable for, for purchase transaction. So you can, you added this formula to handle the load on inventory or in, in an older tax engine is non-deductible tax. You should, you probably need to add a condition to restrict this formula only for purchase transaction instead of 
be applied to order transaction. So that's so you need to decide whether you need to add a condition for it. And in case um, for for price for tax for price include tax transaction, if the tax if the tax of this tax component is part of the price, probably you need to change the formula in the line. And then so that's the, all the things you need to do for the calculation and then it's posting. So you need to add a posting profile. And uh, to decide how you want to post a tax measure. The first thing you need to uh, you need to check whether uh, you can reuse existing accounts. So in the GST configuration, standard GST configuration, there is a lot of account like tax recoverable, tax payable. Probably you can reuse this account. If not, like uh, I know in India we have SEZ scenario which require tax refundable account. In that case, you need to um, you need to add a new account. And you have the account, then you can configure the posting logic. So again, if this posting is applicable, is uh, is for a certain transaction, you should define the condition to to make sure that this posting logic is only for a certain transaction instead of applying to uh, to all kind of transaction. So that's just a whole picture. The flowchart is looks complex, but in the next in the Friday on this Friday session, I will show you how to add a new component. So actually in reality, you don't need to consider so much. Normally it's very straightforward, but this flowchart just give you an idea how flexibility it can be. OK, so then let's go to the configuration. So in today's session, I'm going to show you a very simple extension scenario. Um, let me close the page. So after you import the configuration, so you will have um, you will have this three configuration file, which uh, which are shifted by Microsoft. You cannot change it actually. So in your environment, you will notice that you will uh, you cannot activate this uh, configuration provider because in my side, it is the internal environment. I can activate this one. So what you should do is you should add a configuration provider for yourself. You click save. So you can see we have one more configuration provider. So this is actually kind of workspace for you to make configuration change. So I activate it. Uh, yeah, I activate this one. And then I go to task configuration. What I want to do, what I want to show you is uh, for the standard configuration, you know, the the uh, for transfer order in Indian it's um, is GST is applicable for only for interstate transfer order. If you create an intrastate transfer order, uh, you will notice that there is no any GST component. But actually, it is uh, not correct for some customer. In case, uh, you know, if the customer have multiple GST registration number in one state, even the intrastate transfer order is taxable. So it is expected that there are. Uh, both CGST and SGST for such interstate transfer order. Okay, so basically we need to compel the the uh, the 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 ship from warehouse GST registration number and the ship to warehouse uh, GST registration number. So since I know that all these two fields are already existed, exist in the taxable document. So I don't need to extend the data model. I mean the taxable document. Instead, I just need to extend the tax document. So I click create a configuration. Uh, OK, it's changed. OK, I think there's some uh, probably the, let me double check. I think there's some issue.
Let me check the Microsoft one. OK, so I think maybe there is some uh, issue here, but it's not an issue. So I will I will show you in the standard in in. So basically for for you to change the configuration, you have to derive. You have to create a like this Contoso. And choose this option, so you should uh, derive the test configuration by uh, by by using this option. And after you create a configuration, what you need to do is you just open the designer to make the change. Uh, before I open the designer, I want to show you something. Uh, we have a if you go to configurations and click user parameter. Uh, recently, we have some enhancement in 10.0.2. You can enable this advanced formula editor. And by doing this, if you open the designer. So, as I said, the scenario I'm trying to extend is you, you, I want to change the to make the CGST and SGST applicable for for interest state transfer order in case the GST registration number between this ship from warehouse are different from the and the ship to warehouse. So what I need to do is, as you know, the applicability are controlled by the condition together with the lookup. You you have in the in yes I think yeah you have look up here so what i want to change is the condition here so i click this pencil button this is a new advanced editor so it will take some time to load the load this new control so let's first check the lookup uh first check the condition we have in the standard configuration. So basically the logic is means um, CGST is applicable in case the taxable document type is not interest date, uh, it's not inventory transfer order receive, inventory transfer shipment, uh, inventory transfer order, and uh, uh, there must be HSN code and uh, SAC code. So that is logic. So definitely, if it's uh, definitely for transfer order, CGST and SHG, SHG will not be applicable. So let me check the environment. I think, yeah, I'm sorry. I think there is some browser issue. Wait a second. I have to change another browser. Let me try. Let me try more with this uh, provider. Okay, maybe my my it's not an edge uh, browser. So anyway, let's use this one to continue the demo. So um, yeah, so you create a tax tax document for Contoso, and uh, give it a description. So you have a new derived text document. So you click, uh, sorry, just make sure that we have, I have enabled the, okay, enabled the advanced formula editor. And then I click designer. And I go to CGST. I click the condition. Okay, so so as I already explained, the uh, the logic means 
basically it means CGST is not applicable for, for transfer order. So what we want to make it applicable even for transfer order in case uh, in case the uh, GAT registration number are different between the uh, shift from warehouse and shift to warehouse. So what should I do? I should say, okay, I put a or condition here and uh, So basically like this. So basically this means, okay, in case and uh, at CJC will be applicable, either it is not a transfer order or GST registration number. So this is a shift from warehouse's GST registration number is different from party party GST registration number for for transfer order for any transfer order. So that's the reason I put a all operator here. Okay, so let me put the right. Yeah, so logic is clear. So there are two possible situations. One is it's not a transfer order or it is a transfer order and the the shift from GHG registration number is different from the shift to's warehouse GHG registration number then CGSU will still be applicable so we save it okay no error and you can even test it so let's say um, the inventory the taxable document type is is invent transfer order and then GAT registry number is one two three and for the ship to the GAT registry number of ship to warehouse is also one two three and we give it this address and code I click OK you can see the result is zero which means in this case GAT is not applicable so it is correct, right? It is uh, it is interest stage uh, inventory transfer order, and the GST registration number uh, is are the same. So let's do more one more testing. And so now I put a different GST registration number. So give it a ABC. So now I'm creating a transfer order with different GHG registration number. So according to our intention, it should be applicable. So let's click OK. So as you can see, the result is one. So that, that means now by changing this applicability logic, if you create a transfer order and make sure that the GHG registration number for this ship from ship to warehouse are different, then you can you will be able to see GST, see GST. So of course you can do the same for for SGST to apply the same per, uh, the the to the logic. So after you've done that, you you click the save. Then you have to complete the change. Just give it a description. Enable interest. Order. Click OK. So basically, the whole flow is is complex. 
but actually, if you just want to change part of the logic, it's not that complex. And uh, we still have some minutes, have some time. Let me open the designer. So I just want to explain you. OK, so applicability, as I mentioned in, in the previous flow chart, so in a text type, we have condition for you to maintain the static, static uh, um, applicability rule. And also we have lookups. So this is also static. Why? It's because you maintain the applicability rule in the configuration, which means it is uh, it can be shared for all the environments. You don't rely on any data you define in the financial operation. So pay attention to the source type. It is configure, configuration, which means you maintain the applicability rule in the configuration file. Actually, there is another option. Uh, if you check the SAS. So as you can see, the SAS, the source type is user data. So user data, there is no any, there is no data you maintain in the configuration because the SAS applicability rule is maintained in the in the financing operation. It's not in the designer. So if you go to the text setup, uh, if you click setup. If um, now I select SAS, you will notice that there is a one more tab here called Applicability. So if you check the structure, it is there are two columns, HSN and SAC. It is defined in a configuration. And then, you know, because it's, the source type is user data, you can add the condition here. So for example, I can say for SAS, it's applicable only for this specific HSN code. So that's the difference between user data and configuration. Okay, so so basically, yeah, so I just, um, what I want to emphasize is two points. One is we have, uh, we have uh, applicability logic in the text type level and the text component level. And uh, in both side, you can do it in the condition by condition or by the lookup. And there are two types of lookups. One is configuration, another is user data. Okay. And for formula, of course, you can maintain several formula and you can design, you can define the condition for, for formula which is applicable for certain transaction. So for example, for this base amount, of course, it is it's a generic formula which apply to all the transaction, but if you take a look at this load on inventory, there's some formula because it's only applicable for, you know, uh, tag direction as sales tag receivable. Basically, it's only for purchase transaction. So that is logic. And of course, you can do the same for, uh, for posting profile. Okay, so I think that's uh, basically what I want to share today. And on this Friday, I, I will share more uh, two more scenario to create a complete a new text component and also um, some more complex scenario as regards changing the uh, posting profile and uh, and applicability. Thank you. So back to Janice. All right, thank you, Richard. All right, ladies and gentlemen, I'd like to take a brief moment here and bring your attention to a link that I posted in the Q&A panel. That's a link to a short survey for this web conference. And we ask that you please take a moment before logging out to access it. We hope that you found today's information helpful. And if you enjoyed today's web conference, have feedback on how we can provide you with a better event, or you'd like to submit topics for future web conferences, this is your chance to let us know. We do appreciate the time you take to do this and thank you for your support. And that is going to conclude today's web conference. The recording and a copy of the presentation deck will be available within five business days. Please look for an email from Learning Media that will include details on how to access those. 
I'd like to extend a big thank you to our presenters, Richard and Prabhat, and thank you, audience, for logging in and joining us today.